welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen uh, in the in the, our previous lecture we saw in html css so in this lecture we are going to continue with our series and today we are starting on our projects and we are starting with project one and in the project one uh, we are doing we are doing uh, an order summary card yeah and that's how it looks like uh it looks like simple but it is having a lot of concepts that we'll be learning in today's lecture so the first process when you're doing a project it is not just right away going to the code but instead you do more uh, about planning uh, so the first planning what we mean you look at the you look at the project and then you start uh, trying to extract some components out of it such that you build uh, a relevant HTML from uh, that build or that uh, project that you are trying to to, to, to build so the first thing you look at it and then you break it down into small pieces so that you understand it more better so if you look uh, at our card it is having a lot of components so the first stage we are doing is extracting the components we want to understand how are these components how does uh, how is this card made up so if you look at it it first of all it has this background the bluish uh, background that you are seeing there so that one is just like a container that is holding the card you get so uh, when you are looking at the project it is just like uh, assume that you are looking at a bunch of uh, things put together assume like there is a container then the container is having some other thing then another thing is having another thing so the first thing as you can look at it it is having that bluish background which you are calling it a container and then then inside it that's when we have our card right so right now we have uh, two components right now so we have the container and then we have the card itself okay so let's look at the card now the card itself is also having more components within it so when you look at the card it has a card header or it has that top part that is having the image or the svg and then we have the body part that down part we are calling it card body like the other one is a, a card header or you can call it a card top whichever name you like by the way this is how we name things so that we understand how uh, how uh, which part of the component are we talking about and that's how we generate the names don't just give them random name don't come up with random names just come up with the names that are relevant to the part that you, or the component you are trying to build for instance the header we are giving it like card header meaning the head part of the card and then the bottom part or this down part we are calling it body so when you go inside the card header component you will see that we also have some image some sort of an image so you get how we are extracting this we go into deeper into small understanding of each component so if you look at the card header it has an image that is uh, located on the top part that's why we are coming up with a card image top and you can look at how i'm naming this it is going to make more relevant as we move on okay so when you look at the card body component if you look at the body it has also a number of components in it so you uh, this bluish one is the card body then when you look we have a heading we are calling it card heading that order summary we are calling it card heading and then there is some text we are calling that one card text and then we have some annual plan uh, pricing we are calling it card pricing that block that is having uh, that is having this 
icon the music icon and then is having this uh, annual plan and then is have this button change change and then we can go ahead and then there is some button down the card uh, we have called it that on card btn payment you can see i've got the name from this proceed to payment so this button is talking about payment and that's why we have come up with a name like card button payment meaning that this card uh, this uh, button in the card is responsible for payment this is how i'm extracting the names and this is what you should adopt how you extract the names are coming from how what are uh, what is that button or if it is that element what is that element going to be doing in that project give the name related to that and then we have lastly that uh, card btn cancel like it is a button that is canceling the order so that's why we are calling it card btn cancel okay so let's proceed so now we want to see how do we transform uh, these components into code right so if you are familiar with uh, a blank html starter code if you have been following our series you understand this code should be familiar this is how a blank a blank uh, html code looks like you have this header part you had this header part and then you have the body inside the body is where we write all our code so right now you can see inside here it is still blank it has nothing it has so want to see how do we transform all what you have written what you have extracted above the company have extracted above how do we transform them into um, uh, into a, a to come to life how do we bring it to come to life in the code okay so the first thing is this is what we have right we have uh, we have the container right we have seen that we have the container and then how do we transform uh, this block or that container into code so it will look something like this it will look like uh, container becomes the class becomes the name because we are identifying that part by its name and that name eventually becomes a class that we use to identify then what is a div a div is a section i put down here a div defines uh, a div tag defines a division or a section in an html document and the div tag is used as a container for html element which is then styled with css or my previous javascript the div tag is either styled by uh, using a class or id attribute and any sort of content can be put inside the div tag so a div tag in a brief if you have anything any section that is uh, any division or a section you can simply call it what you can simply call it a div and that's why we're having a container here called a div right so we have a div uh, with a class container and this container name i've derived it from its name or what its purpose it is doing it is our container holding the card right and then inside inside the container we see that we have the card right so inside the card then you, you uh, inside the container we have the card and in the code it will look something like this it means inside the container so you can see we have div class container and inside it we have a card so here inside we are going to write another div we give it a name card and this is how it goes so if we continue right now you can see right now we are having this kind of situation right now we have the card inside the container and the code looks like that so let's go ahead and see if we have to extract now the card components remember we had extracted the background or the container and the card so let's just go ahead and see how do we put in we extract the card okay so if you extract the card you see we have the card header right so the card header that one would transform into that would transform into div with a class card header and it is inside the card that's why you see even here the block of code it is inside the card right so as you can predict that we have another thing in the card so the card is divided into two parts the card header and the card body so if i you can see there the card body is in that uh, that blue and if i transform it to code it will be something like that uh, div with a class card body and that's how 
this is the whole architecture we use when we are extracting or when you are breaking down a project this should be the architecture you are using in all your projects don't rush to code first give them names extract components try to give them names according to how you understand them and eventually these names they come they become classes in html and these very same classes you are going to use them to style the components or they are going to, style, to use to style the elements right so if you look at the card header component it looks like that right we have a class card header which is inside the card right so uh, you can see it has the image on top now as you are going to see there is a number of ways uh, actually to be specific there are two ways you can put that image inside there and one of them we saw them in our previous uh, lectures whereby you put it inside the html right you can put inside html and you simply put the image component inside the card header and that one would work but in this we are going to see another simple way of putting that using uh, css to add that image and to be something new you're going to learn right yeah you can put the image actually not from the uh, from uh, html you can also put it from css and to be interesting see how that is going to to be done so uh, and this uh, takes us to our first coding challenge so the coding challenge we are having, I want you to look at this. Uh, I want you to look at this, right? The card body component. This is the card body components. Try to assimilate how you would extract this into code, right? For instance, uh, you have the card body. So I expect someone to write, for instance, a div with a class card body. And inside the card body, you put, for instance, H1 or H2. It doesn't matter but it is a heading and then with a class card heading and then you put a p tag or a paragraph tag with a card text and then you have another div with card pricing and then you have button with card btn payment something like that so take your time first pause the video right pause the video and try to take up this challenge please it is very important you give yourself tasks because this is going to help you write code and even give you time to think about something and you also be creative on your own so pause the video at this point try to do this challenge and see if you can manage and by the way i don't expect you to pass the challenge even if you fail don't feel so bad about, uh, to yourself this is even harder it is not just something simple but try to attempt it if you get it right that will be great if you don't don't worry because we are going to do this right away okay so with that let us jump into vs code right uh, so the first thing i'm just going to go here on my desktop as usual i think you're familiar with this folder so i'm just going to open it i go to inside html fundamentals and i have here i've already created uh, um, a folder called lesson three which is project one so i'm just going to open this folder in with the vs code so right click and open with so you can simply create that folder oh i'm just going to link that folder by the way um because it is having some resources and uh, by the way, we are going to take up all this code we don't need it for now we are going to start everything from the scratch right so in this folder we are having uh, two folders so the first folder you will create is called CSS and inside it there is uh, one file called style.css which is empty so you can simply just uh, use this icon create a folder using this one and create, uh, create CSS and then uh, inside it create a, f a file called style.css and then we have image folder by the way, I'm just going to link all this in the description below, such that you can actually download this uh, f uh, this lesson three starter file, so that you have all these resources with you. So you have the images that you're going to use. Uh, some of them are SVGs, and then we have a five icon, and we're going to see what is a five icon, and then we have the index.html right so create this index.html and it is empty as you can see 
and then I have here another file in .md and by the way md is called markdown so don't worry about the markdown uh, just know it is a style guide I just uh, uh, brought this file uh, so that it can help us uh, to know to see the colors and all those kind of stuff so that we are not stressed about the colors and even the fonts and by the way when you are doing a clone first make a research to find and you come up with a style guide because if you don't have a style guide you will take more time looking for the colors and what kind of stuff so the first thing is come up with a style guide and you get to know all these things so first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to first uh, load the starter blank uh, starter code by doing shift and one so you do shift one um, that exclamation mark where whatever it is on, on your computer i don't know but on my computer it is on one i'm using windows so yeah it says shift with a one and it should bring up something like that right so press enter and mine it is not working guys okay press enter and you should have this data code right and for this one you are going to say order for title order summary card order summary order summary card is that the spelling guys i think that is not a spelling of summary i don't know who, what does it it doesn't have the word, i guess okay yeah that is good okay so this is our blank if you remember in our slides this is the starter code that we had right okay so we are going to be having uh, our image uh, I, it looks like I don't have the image okay it looks like I don't have the image of the card uh, guys I'm just going to be using I think we use PowerPoint okay to reflect to that so let's first open our style guide this is the thing you must have your style guide such that you are guided you are guided on everything you do so for instance the colors we have them here right we have them here i'm not going to use i'm not going to use our uh, variables it will be for our second project i will introduce in what you call variables like uh, these colors and everything you're going to put some of them in the variables so, like these names pale blue light blue and what kind of stuff so for now we are going to be uh, we are going to be coming and we copy these colors and by the way guys colors can be in very many formats <coughs> so this one is hue saturation and something um i don't know what is error is uh, representing but it, it can be in very many uh, formats the first one they can be a hex code like for instance hash you must have met them something like hash uh, if for instance you wanted like a color at random it would be something like uh, hash zero zero cc and uh, bb something like that that is a color right so it can be written like that or a color can be in rgb format rgb and then inside here you can have some things like 255 or 243 243 comma 243 243 and 243 so that is a, a color right oh uh, yes use another uh, thing here like 240 anyways i don't know but you can see it, it gives some color and that is like rgb format of the color right and then there is also rgba you can use rgba and it also has its format where it has here something like and you put like 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 i don't know but you can see it also gives a color right so colors are in very many formats and it, should, it shouldn't be something you should worry about the only thing is if you are given a color you can find that color on internet right just go and say pale blue hex code they will give you the pale blue hex code or you say bright blue they will give you the bright blue but me i'm having the color codes and you'll find this file in the project uh, with the project so you can simply we are going to be just simply copy and paste and it shouldn't be something we worry about right okay the another thing is we have the typography or we have the font and you can see the font size here is 16 you shouldn't worry about that one 
and then the font family is red hat and you can see you can find it here on google fonts right so if you don't have you can simply click and follow this link as simple as that and it is going to take you to google fonts right so when you reach here on google fonts i'm just going to first remove all these previous fonts i have right i'm just going to simply remove all here and then what you do is uh what you do is move down scroll down like that let me just cross this so move down like this and if you look here they say they want 500 700 and 900 right so how do you select those ones 500 scroll down like so click on 500 scroll 700 and another one is what 900 right so this is a 700 is in the basket and finally 900 as simple like that so click here on this plus here we say view selected families and you can see here we have our fonts right so scroll down scroll down uh, here so you can use a link in html or you can use css so i, I don't know if this is our first time to use the, link, the fonts but you can use uh, both ways work you can simply copy this line of code and put it in css or you can click on the link and then you copy this link and you put it in html right so i'm just going to use this right i'm just going to use uh this and it is having some other font i'm not interested in but for now simply copy this like that copy right click and copy go to our file here go to css and open style.css and simply paste that line of code and by the way it shouldn't have this other font me i'm having some other font that was attached i think it was just there in the browser before but you also do only show red hat display with font weight 500 700 and 900 as simple as that and that's how we connect the fonts right so that one is done and it is right away out of the way right so um the first thing we are going to do we are going to first write out our html and this is why it is very essential you give attention to your html if you write a very wrong if you write a wrong html you will have problems with css so take your time and always extract a very nice html so that you don't have issues with uh with your css so we are going to extract and we have already done some extraction and in the code we have something to look something like this so you have a container and then we have a card and then inside the card we have all these things so i'm just going to be looking from this uh picture right okay so i'm just going to go back to the code and go to your html right so the first thing we have is a container and by the way because i have emit you can see this thing saying emit abbreviation so instead of saying div do, uh, div class container just simply say dot container this one is going to be translated into something like this is going to be translated into div with a class container as simple as that and then inside the container we can say we have the card right that's what you say and then inside the card we have the card header right we have the card then dash header like that and then we have another part which is a card body and this is the part where you are going to you are you are supposed to do the assignment right so when we look in our card body right if we look into our card body we divided it into sections right we have a card heading so this is a simple heading right this is a simple heading and what you can do is simply it is any heading so we can use h1 it has no problem so i could just come inside here and i say the first thing it has it has h1 
and if it is h1 and i want to give it a class i say h1 dot for instance card heading it is going to create a h1 and gives the class card heading right and in that inside that it has uh, it has a text called order summary right so right here order summary right like that okay i'm just going to scroll down here okay like that and then what what else do we have inside i i think you can see how i'm following this structure here i'm not just actually cramming anything simply extract your components very well and this will be smartly coming out organically to you into html don't force things just simply first take your time extract things into the way they are we have this outer bluish thing and it is the card body and inside the card body we have a number of things and i'm simply writing them the way they are right so we have a heading and it is card heading and we said headings are represented from h1 to h6 so you could give any a heading uh level like h6 it doesn't matter so long as you just put their heading right and then we have text and we said a paragraph of text like this one is represented by a p tag right in our previous uh, 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 uh lessons right so you simply come down here and you simply say p dot card text as simple as that and then you you can we can now put this text that is inside and you say you can now listen to millions of songs audio books podcasts okay i i think i'm not going to cram all that but it says you can you can now listen to millions of audio books podcasts uh, podcasts okay this first see other text audio books and podcasts on any device anywhere you like on any device podcast so it is audio books and and podcasts on any device on any device anytime everywhere i don't know if that is the, the how they follow but anyways that is text you can just simply write it the way it is as you are seeing it there so that is my that is my text and you can see smartly it is vs code is helping us to do the whole of indenting and so then another thing is a uh, card pricing so you would ask yourself how am i going to extract something like a car uh, like card pricing now interesting enough you can see inside a card pricing there are some other small elements for instance there is this icon the music icon and then there is this text which is having annual plan like a sort of like a small subheading and then there is this price and there is this small uh, link or a button right so that one makes it to have to be a div right it makes it to be a div or a small section right so that's how you should understand if anything is having more elements more elements mixed elements so treat it as a div right so i'm just going to go here and i put a div right so the first thing it is card pricing so go down here and you say dot card pricing as simple as that so you said the card pricing what do we have the first thing is we have a music icon right so you could just say you give it anything you can put in a p tag you can put an h tag but i'm just going to choose uh right now i'm just going to choose um a div for now i'm just going to say so dot music icon said so i can understand it it's a music icon it has a music icon right it has a music icon and then another thing it has it has this thing here that is having annual plan and this thing i'm just going to create a price right i'm just going to create just a price 
so inside here i'm just go so calling now i'm not calling it a p tag i'm also calling it price because uh if you look at this price it has a price heading and then the price number right so inside it it has a we can just say it has a simple heading you cannot call it quality h6 doesn't matter dot uh price uh price you can just create a price heading it doesn't matter anything you come up guys uh right now i can't think of a better name but you, you just come out like a price heading and inside the price heading uh, so i have a new plan right i have a new plan inside the what so I'm just gonna say a new plan actually you could have like maybe pricing plan or something okay just wait pricing plan price uh whatever so price price heading it's okay let's go with that and then uh still inside this price block we have the real price now so in this we have 59.99 per year right 59 dollars or 60 dollars that is 59.99 per year so we just write down come here and write a p tag inside here p dot uh price tag we can I just say call this one a price tag right and it is dollar uh 59 uh okay 59.99 stock year or per year right something like that okay and then next we have the two buttons right we have our beautiful button on uh, below here the first one is a bluish uh, button and it is called card btn payment so the only thing you just do right the way they are as simple as that so it is they're not inside the price so move outside the price whether you can minimize this like this so you have under the price you have the two buttons right okay i can just say simply say button dot that is giving them a class and the first button is card btn right payment card btn payment press this and you can see and it says order uh what does it say payment what proceed to payment okay it is saying proceed proceed to payment proceed to payment okay and then another uh, button down here it is a cancel button so you say go button dot card btn cancel right so, something like that and then is a cancel order all right i guess that is the word that's written there yeah cancel order and with that oh, boom we have our html written out right this is our html and you see i don't even need to see it in the browser at this point the most important thing you should use your notebook or you can use any handout or anything or any paper with a book try to extract these uh, things the way we said right go on the paper see the thing you are, you are building if it is a website or it is any component on the website before you rush to do it first do it on the paper if you can't do it on the paper you cannot do it in the code trust me i've done this and it is out of experience so you first write all this html write it on the paper before you go into code so when you have convinced yourself and you have written it out on the paper then proceed transform all what you have written on the paper into code like the way we have done right so the, and the next thing right now you're going to do is we first connect our html we connect it to the css okay so you just simply come here and you can use this shortcut you say link and when you say link with emmet is going to bring you all these all these things and you can simply say link to css 
now by default it thinks that this style.css is located in the same folder as the index which is not the case so where is it located if you want to use uh, this vrc to help you put a dot slash it brings all the folders and you choose where the folder where your file is located it is in css as simple as that and it is called style.css so this one gives a link to our css where it is located right now okay then another thing i'm just going to link is a favi icon so what is a favi icon so most of when you go to a website right for instance let us use this one we have used it for google fonts so you see on top here there is always a heading like red hat display google fonts this one was the title right if we try to inspect this i don't know if we have ever done inspecting but if we inspect this google page right and you go in the head you can see that they will be having a title right they will have a title don't worry about all this that is going on just know they have a title called uh, red hat called red hat display google fonts somewhere uh, you can take your time to find uh, this where it is okay uh, they have all these uh, description going on uh, like title they have twitter title and all this kind of stuff okay guys so uh you can just realize uh here i'm not seeing it but it is must be in this one of these headings so this is the title part this is where we have the title part i don't know i could try to select this i think it's not selectable at this point but okay let's just go with that just know this part here it is the title and then this icon if you look at uh, closely there is an icon before the red hat so that is the favi icon and this is where the favi icon goes right and you can see they also linked the favi icon down if you see here is have link icon and they gave this whole thing the favi icon right so you can even you can even just click this link or you can go to that link and you see the favi icon they use it right you can just go to try to go to that link and you will see that this is the favi icon or this is the icon here on this uh, right hand on the left hand here this is the icon they use it and we also have the same thing they have given us a favi icon <coughs> sorry <coughs> so to link it what you do is come down here and you also say link and you can see there is favi icon so click on it and don't worry so now it also it thinks that in the first place that this favi icon is in the same folder as index right but you realize our favi icon is also located in the images so you say like that choose images and click on favi icon right and by the way this one is of type image i guess and i don't know if we're supposed to put something like png here to show up i'm not familiar yeah and you can see it has showed up here okay and we will see in the future how do you generate a favi icon how do you get a favi icon from your logo we are going to see that in our, our next projects as we move on right okay for now we have all our things linked up so we should be able to view this so if you don't have this uh live server extension last time we talked about it please uh make sure you go to extensions right go to extensions and look for live server right look for the live server extension it shouldn't be hard to get by retweak just click on install and you are good to go right okay so just come here and you see where they say go live click on go live and boom it takes us to our thing and guys look at this look at this guys look at this we have 
we have somewhere there our favi icon it has already worked like if you look on the left there we have order summary card which is the title and then on the left we have our favi icon okay this is something nice and look we already have the card coming out we have all our buttons looking nice we have all these things moving on so everything right now it is okay we don't have the images and that's why we are going to look at it right now okay so come back here so let's look at one thing at a time for instance um let's see so start with the simple things when i go back to here when i go back to the body uh, not the body when i go back to the container what do i look the container have some properties for instance it has a background of pale blue right like that now uh, i just go into this one and i do exactly that so do the simple things first right like giving a container its background right so go to styles and on the first line i'm just going to say dot now how we get uh, the class from uh, html we use a dot to present a class so i say dot container uh, brackets and then the property i want to talk about is background color right and where is my background color we had these colors here right we have the colors here and this is pear blue and i'm just going to simply copy this simply copy that and just like this right background color boom and if we go and you can see our background color has changed that is nice guys that is really nice right now you realize we are having a problem and something to fix right away first thing is that you see there is some sort of padding and a margin that is uh, by default the browser puts a margin and a padding on these sides and not only here it, it puts it it puts the margin and padding by default right it puts margin and padding by default and you can see that this space and we don't want that space so how do we remove that so what you do is before you write anything here below the fonts select and say star now star means selecting everything in html document and say padding zero by the way you can say i've used p0 tap tab and then margin zero tap tab and this means we are saying on everything we are doing in html give it a padding of zero and margin of zero anything you want to put the padding and margin should be about ourselves but not the default one they are putting so, the, so the one we are putting we know where we have put it but not this one you cannot know how much padding they have put by default but what you want is that to make sure everything has no padding and margin and this is called a browser reset this kind of thing we normally do at first is called a browser reset now in the browser reset that's not the word reset guys uh the browser reset and the first thing in the browser reset is you first work on the padding and the margin and you saw now if we go back look at it guys everything is starting from it is flashing there is no any space no margin is left right and this is what you should do first before you do anything right now there is one thing that is remaining and it is called box sizing so before i put box sizing right what box sizing does is that instead normally what happens if for instance uh i will demonstrate this i you don't know how i'm just going to demonstrate this guys but box sizing what it basically does so i'm just going to first put here box sizing uh to border box okay so what i'm just going to demonstrate let me go back to here to powerpoint maybe i can simply demonstrate this i'm just going to go below here i'm just going to duplicate this slide and 
I can remove everything that is here like so so I'm just going to draw two two boxes to demonstrate this so I can have a box like this and I can simply even duplicate this two boxes so uh, I'm just going to get a text editor so here we have box sizing uh, we have box sizing box sizing here to content content box and this is uh, this is by default it is by default box sizing is on a uh, content box and the one we have changed we have put uh, to border border box now what are these terms mean now in box sizing what it means is if i have a container like this one right and this container has maybe a width of 300 pixels right so we assume this something has maybe a width of 300 pixels right so this can have a width of 300 pixels so if it has a width of 300 pixels up to there and you give it some padding you give it some what some padding or margin so let's say you are giving it so this was the width so i'm just going to put it down here so if this is the width of the box or of the of the container and then we add a padding of 10 padding of 10 pixels right if we add padding of 10 pixels and just say 10 so what it is going to do is going to add 10 here is going to go on the sides let me just use another box so what it's going to do is going to put another 10 here on the sides i don't know if i can use another color like black to demonstrate this so it will come up with something like this so this 10 in black is like the 10 pixels padding we have put right so what it is doing what is it doing it is adding the padding outside so now the new width it is no longer uh it is no longer what if you look at the new widths right now it is no longer 300 it is now 320 if you look at the new width just going to put this outside from here going right away uh, to here right so if you see the new width right now is that the new width the new width uh, new I'm just going to put here the word new width is equal to 300 pixels plus plus this padding on the left which is 10 pixels plus another padding that is on the right which is uh, which is uh, another 10 pixels and the new uh, whole width becomes 320 pixels so this is the law uh, it is following if you look at how content box works this is what exactly what it does i don't know if you guys you are looking at this so in box size in content box what it does if you add any margin if if here i add another margin it will add whatever you add from here it add it on the old width and then like 300 with the old width and it adds these 10 pixels and these 10 pixels for the left and right padding and becomes 320 pixels so you can actually end up with a very big container but for you wanted it, uh, the width is to be 300 so when we don't want this kind of behavior this kind of behavior will make you calculate for every element calculate to know if I'm giving it a padding, what is the new width, what is the old width, all this calculation, you don't want to get involved in it. 
So what do we do to avoid that? So I'm just going to use the same thing here. So if we give this, uh, sorry, if I'm just going to simply duplicate this. So if we give this 300 pixels like so, right? If we give this one 300 pixels like so. Uh, uh, sorry, 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 guys. Um, if we give uh, this one 300, I just want the arrow, guys. I want this arrow. I don't know if you can get it. Okay, like so. So if this is the 300 pixels, what does this uh, now represent? So if I give this one a padding of 10 pixels, so what it will do, it will bring it here. And it also uh, put it here. Like so. So instead, what it does in the box sizing border box, is that it, it knows you want the width of 300. So everything that you add, whether it is padding, whether it is margin, it doesn't matter. What it will do, it will put everything inside and the total width must sum up to 300. It does not add all the padding to the old width to come up with a new width. What it knows is you want 300s as the width. So what it does is that if you put 10 pixels, it will do its mathematics. It knows I should just have this blue, blue thing should be 280. And when I add this 20, 10, 10, it should become 300. So it makes sure with your padding and everything calculated, it is 300. And this is what exactly what we want. If you say the container should be 30, 300 pixels, it should be 300 pixels, right? So the difference is that with this one, our content box, the padding and the margin are all added to the old width that you had uh, estimated and it is put like this but in a border box the everything you put as margin or, uh, or padding is calculated and they come up with that width that you estimated everything is put inside right so something like here it will be 10 pixels so uh, to say uh, if i'm to write uh, here uh, if i'm to write there i would say 10 pixels um, I would uh, have uh, 10 pixels here at the beginning. Maybe I make uh, this one. Uh, sorry. I would maybe I make that one white. Okay. And okay, is it on top? Okay, it seems to be it is behind. Okay, let's bring it front. Okay. So you have 10 pixels here and here you have something like 280 it will do its calculation and it makes sure it come up with your 300s as the width and it is so much helpful we don't think about all this calculation for us what you want is only and only the width sorry for that uh so here we have our 10 uh, pixels like so right so it comes up the calculation and sums everything to be 300 and that's the difference if you haven't understood this we are going to continue explaining even in the next lectures every lecture i will be trying to explain it so that you understand it so we change the box sizing from the content box to border box because of that and this is what we call a browser reset and it's something we always do be fast no in a brother set we always do this okay so with that uh we have our project moving on uh smoothly like that okay so the next thing i'm just going to do is that you see in our card that this background it is going all over down if i go back up here you see that it is going all over the whole uh the whole thing so what i'm just going to do is you can simply tell the container that occupy a hundred percent so you say height it is a hundred view height right now what is vh vh stands for view height and what is view height 
now view height it is this screen you are seeing right now so from where the browser starts at this point here in the corner to this one this is like viewable height something you are seeing by eyes this screen from on top here to the down here that where we are seeing this viewable height this one you get this viewable height is what you call vh and it's 100 percent so if we said 50 it will move from here up to the center if we say 100 it moves all the way down to finish the whole screen then for width it is 100 view width if someone says 100 view width it means from this extreme end to extreme end okay so something like that we already have things yeah, looking like uh, this okay so now uh, from there uh, let's just uh, uh, let's just take uh, a simple break I'll just be back <laughs> 